I wanna know. Yeah. <coughs> okay, that says that it's the letter. But why does it say it's still dogs organized neatly? <laughs> Maybe I am a dog who needs to be organized neatly. Oh no. Oh no. I am the dog organized neatly. <sighs> but yeah, what, what does... Yeah, it is, it is, okay. It is. It is the letter. OBS is lying to me. <laughs> I'm still sick. Help. <coughs> I'm gonna go do stuff. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Oh god, that was loud. My apologies. I want to know. <coughs> I don't remember where we are. I know we're in Ashton's route. But that's it. Scream. Until my throat bleeds raw. Scream. Until my lungs burn. Scream. Until all that remains are the guilt and the tears. The sun hangs lower when I stumble back into consciousness. With late afternoon light, with late afternoon light slanting through the windows of my car and painting the city outside with a vibrant shade of oranges and reds, it's almost as if no misfortune has been befallen us on me. But they're all gone. But they're gone. All of them. Out here alone in broad daylight, the idea feels too palpable, too real. It's a painful truth that I have to wake up to now. Okay. <laughs> Every day from now on, if I ever survive her curse by some awful stroke of luck, ooh, can we kill Ashton? We only killed Rebecca before our first playthrough. Hell, I can almost see her at the corner of my eyes, leering at me with that cruel smile of hers. I can just hear her mocking me in my head, laughing. <laughs> Why didn't she go after me first? I saw the letter before Rebecca and Zack did. Why can't she just kill me after she's finished with the others, so we can be done with this? Why? Why are you doing this? Do you even know what you're doing? How many people you've hurt? Do you even understand? Do you even realize what you've done? But it's insane to ask questions of it. It's not even human. It doesn't understand pain. It doesn't feel guilt. It's irrational to even expect an explanation from her. Just like how irrational it is of me to reach for my gun and decide to keep pushing at this. Light glints briefly on its surface, as if in agreement, before I holster it, 
Because no matter how bleak and hopeless everything appears now, the people I've lost, they won't want me sitting here. I've got to do something. If not for my sake, then for theirs. For their memory. I'm getting nowhere dallying like this. I have to move. I still have one more lead I can look into. The mansion. Including the people currently residing there. The rights. Especially if my assumptions are correct and the re that the reason Zack was there was because of the curse. Something must have happened there for him to see the need to look to look into it and break inside that place. What if the couple has fallen victim to the curse? It doesn't fall outside the realm of possibility. I've been so biased, not even thinking that they might be in danger as well. But during the open house with Isabella, they might have seen the letter and... I HAVE MURDERED EVERYONE, SHADE! And there's a hint that we might be able to kill Ashton! Wait, where is it? Uh, da 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 Wait, where? Ashton, like, raised his own death flag, and I got excited. Uh, laughing. Yeah, why can't she just kill me after she finished with the others so that we can be done with this? Nyanya? I did Pen Pen! Hello! Oh my god! Eight months? Let's go! I'm still sick, sadly, so I have orange juice. But yeah, thank you, Ate Pen Pen. But during the open house with Isabella, they might have seen the letter and... Fuck. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Some fucking detective I am. Thank you, Ate. Mahal kita. I hope you're doing well. That's likely the moment when Cooper saw it. If logic holds, I need to hurry there right away. <coughs> and if there are answers anywhere, it would be there. It should be there, where all this fucking mess started. Aww. <laughs> Le hearts. <laughs> hearts back for Ate Pen Pen. <laughs> it's not only my life on the line here, there are others. What happened to my friends, I won't wish on anyone else, no matter how much I loathe them. Tonight, by whatever means necessary, I have to get in there, find a way to break this damn curse. But I won't be able to do that without the letter with me. The wind has already picked up, and when I exit my car and return to the precinct... Somewhere, the faint sound of thunder booms, filtering even through the concrete walls of my workplace. Though sparsely manned around this hour, the on-duty officer's lively chatter easily fills the room. Some coax me into joining them when I pass by, but all of it has been turned down in the favor of rushing straight to the evidence area. Normally, taking evidence out is a tedious process. <gasps> Kathy! My wife! What happened to Bobo last night? Did you attack him? Was he finally sealed forever? Normally, taking evidence out is a tedious process. However, being one of the people in charge of investigating Isabella's murder soothens, smoothens the process. He broke up with me? He took himself- Wait, you were dating Bobo? What? <laughs> Wait, what? 
Shade, yo, tell me the deets. What happened? <coughs> oh, you were partners in crime? <coughs> Never date a fake. Wait, is Bobo not human? <laughs> and after spouting a legit sounding reason, the custodian is handing me the letter five minutes later. It's probably... I'll probably get in trouble for this if they find out I lied. But everything has already gone foobar. Getting in trouble at work is the least of my worries. Worst case, they'll be dead and they'll have no one to dismiss. In case I survive, think about... I'll think about that, let, that later when this whole ordeal with the dumb curse is over. I mean, look at this thing. I won't take it seriously if it isn't for all the fucked up shit that's been happening. This is the sort of stupid... This is the sort of stupid people pass along as a prank through emails and text messages for fuck's sake. Did people seriously make po copies of this and pass them around to try and save themselves from a possible curse? That's the insane logic that could be garnered from the fact that there are multiple victims. Wait, is me f streaming this technically me say sharing the letter <laughs> in all technicalities? Man, I shouldn't. I I don't stream when I'm sick, at least like visual novels and stuff, because I don't remember anything that has happened. <laughs> like I don't remember getting to like uh level forty eight now. Oh, dogs organized neatly? I just blank out, bro. <laughs> <coughs> so I wonder how much of of this I'll remember. That'd be interest. That'd be interesting. That's the insane logic that be that can be garnered from the fact that there are multiple victims. Yeah, I don't remember anything. What I'm saying. <laughs> we killed Bobo. Oh no. I killed Bobo. Can I plead insanity? <laughs> I didn't mean to kill Bobo. Kathy, did you make me do it? Did you try to stop me? Was I the bad cop? <laughs> Sup, Pug? How's it going? I just realized I'm a murderer. <coughs> Was Isabella not saved because she had simply shown us this one? Instead of sending five different ones. I tried to stop Bobo was crying. Why was Bobo crying? <laughs> what do you mean it's fate? I'm a murderer, Kathy. Now we're both wanted by the government. Couple bonding, let's go. <laughs> What sort of selfish person would even endanger other people just to save their own skin? <laughs> More importantly, what does this have to do with the mansion? There'll be time for answers later. I've wasted enough time here. Quickly, I stuff the letter into my pocket and head back to my car. Cappy was the death quick, at least. <laughs> Did I kill a Bobo quickly? <laughs> Was it a mercy kill? Is this why you guys aren't partners anymore? Is it my fault? Also, it's snowing outside, so I feel like... What did I do to him if he was suffering? Yeah, it's snowing outside. I know it's spring, but I feel like this is more fitting. There'll be enough time for answers later. I've wasted enough time here. Quickly, I stuff the letter into my pocket and head back to my car. Oh, dang, Pug! Congrats! Have fun in the Bahamas, my dude! I've been thinking about doing a, a travel board stream to... Because, like... My parents are giving me the freedom to, like, travel alone for a week somewhere. 
So yeah. The only caveat for me traveling alone, it needs to be an English speaking country. Because I was supposed to go to Japan with my brother, but my brother really doesn't want to go. So, <laughs> I need I need to make plans for myself. Where can a little plant just toddle about <laughs> out in the world? Ooh, you've been to the Bahamas when you were a baby cappy? <gasps> the places I've been to is Jamaica, Cancun, Philippines, and that's it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, we sh I said we should. <laughs> oh, that's how out of it I am. Uh, you should really go to Japan early. Like, like, like sometime <coughs> this year. Or maybe the next, because the Japanese yen is at its all-time low. So, yeah. You can get a lot of cheap stuff there. That is still- that's fair. That's fair, Pug. But I'm just- I'm just saying. <laughs> the Japanese yen is at an all-time low, and don't accept English menus. Will the Japanese economy fix itself in two years? Maybe you'll get lucky, and, and it'll still be at an all-time low. Hopefully. <coughs> Oh shit. Oh my god, Pug is Bippy! Oh my god, Pug is Bippy. He's high schooler. That is 100% fair. Good luck on your studies, bro. Good luck on getting into the collage you want. I believe in you, my dude. Have fun in the Bahamas. You deserve a rest from high school. Let's go. Within 10 minutes, I'm driving out of Luxembourg and heading straight to Asal, my village. In the distance, flashes of lightning light up the horizon, white and sharp, against the black curtain of the night. Thunder threatens with a rumble, seconds later echoing long across the heavens. And with one last roar, the sky is open in earnest. Wait, you've been in my stream. How have you not figured out I sound like a child? I- <coughs> Fuck, don't make me- Don't make me- <coughs> Admit this again. I open people's streams, but I have them on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I I support, but I support in the slowest way possible. In the lowest form. I'm sorry. I'm the ultimate lurker. I don't even know what's happening, bro. The rain falls in fast. Steady sheets creating shallow shallow puller 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 puller. I I can't speak. Help. The rain falls in fast, steady sheets, creating shallow puddles on the dirt path, drenching everything the eyes can reach. Despite having grown up in this city, I still despise the rain. Living here doesn't mean I have to like it. Lucky me, I've reached the mansion before the downpour has turned torrential. The long slog uh, from a Salem village by foot has already ma been made difficult, by the light drizzle, and brighting winds buffeting against my body every few seconds. By the time I found cover under the trees, lining the vicinity of the mansion, my shoulders are already drenched. My hair is also sticking against my skin, and out in every possible direction. Thankfully, the letter- A TASER IN THE RAIN?! That doesn't sound safe! <laughs> He's gonna shock himself! There's gonna be an AOE! Damn! <laughs> K 
Kathy, you don't use your tasers in the rain, sweetie. We talked about this. And gun I've brought with me has remained relatively dry. That's the most important thing. Okay, the taser is dry. That's good. There's no splash damage. <laughs> <clears throat> However, those are the least of my problems at the moment. Tasers in the rain sounds like a good song title. It does. It's like singing. It's like the song. It'll, it'll be like the song Singing in the Rain. Yeah! <laughs> I was gonna say it's like Singing in the Rain, but it's just pain screaming. <laughs> Sometime after the housewarming party, scumbag Wright has suddenly grown a brain and tightened the security around the, around the mansion. Likely because of what Zack did. A guard is now stationed in every possible point of entry. The main entryway, the back door leading to the kitchens. Hell, it's almost a miracle no one has spotted me once I enter the property. Although, that's probably because I've kept close to the forest. While I can always create a clever way in for myself, after this indulge, it'll be difficult to do so without making much much noise or leaving yeah, tracks. Yeah. <gasps> Mozzie! Hello! Holy shit! Next month, then, it'll be two years. Thank you for coming here, Mazim. <coughs> but now you must read the game in Nyaz for a short while. Ooh, okay. Well, I can. Oh, well, I. Well, Nya can. Oh, when Mio can always create a clever way in for Nyan's self. Under this dulge, it'll be difficult to do so without making much noise or leaving checks, Nya. I don't really have the luxury either, do I? You didn't mew, Ashton. Nya is in the rain. Considering how off this place feels, Mew stopped in the property and the mansion came into view. Every light is off, even with the security on the, the patrol outside. And the whole house itself? It feels empty, eerie, too quiet. Normally, Mule, it would, Mule pass it off as some kind of power outage because of the storm. It's not a far off conclusion when this place is almost in the middle of nowhere. However, something just feels wrong. There are not many words I can yafied. This is very saddening. Something happened here. Yeah. Or about to. It's the sole reason why Mew haven't done anything yet. Simply observing, watching, listening for anything. Mew might be pressed for time, but Mew is not care uh, not a careless idiot. Or Mew idiot. Mew Mew Nanny it? Nyanrod. Although Mew need a way in, desperately so. Moving without thinking will not only endanger Mew. With so many unknown variables and what we're dealing with, Mew also have to act on the assumption that someone is always in danger, especially in this place. Mew can't act in impetuously. <gasps> Doggo! As much as Mew hates rights, Mew not about to cast his death because of one thoughtless action. Mozzie, is that, is that good enough? Have you been satisfied? Oh, it's no longer her birthday. We should search the birthday doggo pick. That's good enough? <laughs> I tried, my dude. There isn't, there isn't much, uh... There wasn't much to nyafai, <laughs> sadly. You can see my little toggles. Wee. As much as I hate rights, I'm not about to cause his death because of one thoughtless action. Thought Nyasinus. 
If there's a place he deserves to be at, it's in prison. Not a morgue. I don't think the ghosts like that I stopped nyaing. <laughs> she sounds mighty upset. Oh my god, why is this picture so huge? <laughs> she sounds so angry that I stopped nyaing. Well, she sounds so sad. Why is she sad? Oh. Stop. 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 Hey, calm down. Hey, stop. <laughs> it's been a while since I streamed. It's so jank. Let's go. So when a hoarse, painful sob suddenly rings out, above the loud pitter-patter of rain, only then do I stir. A woman. Perhaps a servant. Or worse, Hannah Wright. Wait, actually... It does sound like Hannah. Is it coming from the fo- It's coming from the forest. Just right up ahead, in fact. Not too far from the house. Regardless, I give the place a quick, weary glance before following the noise. Carefully keeping to the shadows, one cautious step after another. Louder and louder it c goes as I near, until it abruptly turns into a loud, desperate, anguish cry. I break into a run. One nervous hand, ready on the gun, holstered at my hip, and the other raised for balance as I scurry across the de dense understory. Dead leaves crunch under my shoes, but I pay it no mind. There's only the voice. The woman, and... Nothing. Abruptly it all stops, and I am met with a sudden hush. Blank. Empty. Almost deafening in its stillness, even with my labored breathing and pounding heartbeats against my ears. Behind me, another branch breaks, and... Help. Help me. <coughs> with homework? Dread surges within me while I spin around and take a hard step back, ignoring the chilly pin pricks crawling at the back of my neck. But before I can even meet her eyes, the world unexpectedly pitches sideways, tilting, and tilting till the ground beneath me finally crumbles. Oh, there's a body we haven't discovered yet! <coughs> we need to find Marianne's body. So we're going to have a new CG, a new death CG. My hands fight for purchase, only to meet air. By then, it's too late. My foot slips further and the rest of my body follows. Dark spots blur the edges of my vision. Black tendrils twist and curl around my limbs. Soft footfalls echo. Far from the distance, scurrying, scampering, moving in an odd rhythm with the sharp, piercing no notes of a laughter. But more than that are the voices, lacing venom inside every crevice in my head. Murmurs that jeer, scoff, and deride. Over. It's because you didn't listen. And over. It's all your fault. And over again. Why won't you believe me? A reminder of what I've failed to do and who I've failed. What I'm desperately trying to fix. A scream threatens to burst, but my throat closes off. Ever so slowly, a chill seeps into every nerve in my body, washing away every sensation in me apart from one. There is only fear. <laughs> Once again, her laughter echoes. A sound both bitter and unforgiving. It is the last thing I hear before she reaches me. The ground trembles. 
The world slows to a stop. Half darkness greets me when my eyes finally snap open. The soft patter of dripping water somewhere spurring my consciousness further. Ah, orange juice. Do you guys prefer orange juice with or without pulp? I personally like it with pulp. But the rest of my family are no pulp orange juice drinkers. It's a sad life. Pulp is a sin! <gasps> Cappy! I'll, I'll drink the pulp for you. It's okay. <laughs> pulp is fine? Okay. <laughs> See, opposites attract Cappy. This is why we're married. <laughs> for a few short moments, I remain still, blinking away the dizziness. Allowing my vision to adjust to the light, to the lack of light, and my breathing to even out first, before pushing myself up with one arm and attempting to stand. Turning alone is a struggle on its own. An inch of movement sends a stab of sharp pain right up my arms and back, giving me another pause. <clears throat> Shit. We didn't break anything. Fuck. There doesn't seem to be any injury or major fracture, although the whole of my back does feel sore and raw. Probably from when I've skidded down prior to landing myself here. A comforting thought. The second attempt comes easier later, though no less painful. And by the time I'm back on my feet, the exertion has left me gasping in short, shallow breaths and leaning heavily on the wall nearest to me. Actually, wait, where did I put you guys? Where is chat? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. <laughs> sorry, I have a small brain. Sick brain is, is just all over the place. <sighs> By the time I'm back on my feet, the excursion has left me gasping in short, shallow breaths and leaning heavily on the wall nearest to me. Behind me, a light draft blows in from where I've fallen in, coming in short, sharp bursts into what's apparently an underground tunnel and brings in the fresh, earthy smell of rain from the topside. Regardless, it fails to mask the old, musty scent of the place, a mixture of mold, mildew, dust, grease, and something distinctly foul, like death. More, wor more worrisome than the putrid, festering smell, however, are the cells that line both sides of the tunnel. Under the dim light, I can barely make out what's inside some of them, but I already have a few ideas, all of which I refuse to delve into at the moment. Knowing how long this mansion has stood, somehow, no matter how unexpected, finding the existence of this place it isn't too surprising. I wonder if Scumbag knows about this. <coughs> he no longer has a name. He's just Scumbag now. Nice. Probably not, unless he's also the kind of person who takes joy in inflicting this kind of suffering on others. I don't really think so. Oh. My UI is popping up. No, stop. Stop, UI. Here, do you want spring UI? Will that make you behave? <laughs> Do you prefer spring UI? Dang. I see how it is. It don't feel like spring though. It's snowing. <laughs> He's rotten to the core, but not that rotten. I'll probably balk at this, move out the first opportunity, and have it demolished. The very idea of what has occurred in this place years ago makes me real as well. I've known long ago places like this tend to hold secrets. This, though? If this is just the tip of the iceberg, I fear I may discover in the mansion itself and the tale behind that fucking letter. The fear's inconsequential. As pleasant as the sight of this is, this place might also be the 
only way for me to get inside unnoticed. Sighing and taking one last gulp of clean air, I push away from the wall and delve deeper into the passage. Let's just hope it'll be smooth sailing from here on. You have just jinxed yourself, Mr. Axton, and it'll indeed not to be smooth sailing now. <laughs> Turns out it is, for the most part. Oh, that's disappointing. <coughs> I mean, good for you, buddy. The path rarely deviates. No sharp turns or branching routes. Just a long, empty hallway stretching out before me, filled with nothing but dust, dirt, and a few rusted chains scattered about. The only problem is having an overactive imagination, and walking amidst a place shadowed by death. Every sound, every sudden movement, even the faintest of it spurs it. At times, there are scampering, small noises that abruptly rise above my footfalls, rebounding off the hollow walls and echoing inaudibly across the whole span of the tunnel before fading away just as swiftly as it rang. It's probably just some animal. A rat, maybe? I hope. I pause, nevertheless, straining my ears for more of it, while I gradually move my hand to the si to my side, slow and steady until the tips of my fingers brush off the ga gun's handle. Although cold against my skin, it's the closest thing I have to comfort at the moment. For a long minute, I wait, holding my breath, watching every form, edge, and shadow at the corners of my vision for any movement. After a heartbeat and nothing, I allow the tension to ease out of me in the form of a long, slow exhale that reverberates around the whole place. Things continue like this as I traverse the whole passage, pausing, listening, moving on, repeat, eventually losing track of time while I go deeper into the tunnel. Until finally the corridor ends with the si sight of the light slanting from a door left ajar. On the other side, from whatever little glimpse the opening offers, I spy bottles lining the walls and liquor barrels for aging. The wine cellar. Right into the kitchen, then. More than eager to get out of this place, I quicken my pace. But as soon as the doors within his arms reach and I push it open, a foul putrid scent assaults my senses. A heady mixture of odors akin to a rotting fruit and decaying meat that catches me completely off guard. Surprised, I stumble back gagging, having accidentally breathed a lungful of it, only for my foot to end up disturbingly, disturbing the edge of a nearby puddle I failed to notice earlier. It sends splashes of liquid right across the hem of my pants, and I fight the urge to grimace as a raw metallic smell rises up in the air. A smell I'm more familiar with. I'm more than familiar with, thank you very much. That doesn't mean I have to like it. Sighing, I take a brief moment to brace myself before crossing the threshold, already expecting the worst. The trail of dark liquid leads me to it. Its form is slumped against a wine vat not too far from the door. The rank lingers heavier here, stronger. Petrification has just started, but in a place like this you can't really tell the time of death from that alone. The humidity and temperature in this room has likely delayed the process. An estimate? The person has died sometime around three or five days ago which places the timeline around the time people are just moving in, and also the housewarming party. A servant, then. No. Someone with the same social status as the rights. Whoever it is has also read the letter, based on the writings around the body. Someone who was also present during the open house and the party. So a guest. Wordlessly, I draw closer muttering a quiet prayer under my breath for the departed. 
The least I can do now is figure out who it is and try to let his or her family. Try to find his or her family once I'm done here. Let them know what has become of their kin. Even through the layers of clothes, its shoulder feels cold to the cut touch. Somehow, despite not being new to this, it still sends a nauseating chill to my stomach. Maybe it's because this time I know exactly why this person died. Another person too late to save from this curse. Ignoring the dread, gently I give the blazer a pull. Ah! Like that a graphic image. Oh, her head's falling off! That's rude! Sew it back on! Unexpectedly, her hair- Her head lolls back, twisted, contorted. Severed. Cappy, we can't eat dead bodies! We've talked about this. It's rude! Think about the families! Did the family give you permission to eat her body? I don't think so! They aren't using it anymore. This is no time to lose one's head. Exactly! Screw it back on! Marianne, screw it back on! You need to get permission first, Cappy. It dangles. Fuck! It dangles from one side to the other before settling at an odd angle. The next thing I know, I'm staring at the hollow base of her neck. With only a thin layer of skin keeping it, keeping her severed head to her body. It dangles. Yeah, it dangles. <laughs> the more than the gruesome sight or the sickening feeling that has lurched up to my throat is recognition. I know this woman. And it's not just any woman I have seen randomly on the streets. She's the same one I met at G's five days ago, smashed drunk and babbling about her frustrations about her employers. Marianne McConnell, famous interior designer extraordinaire. Not so extraordinary now, with a throat slice viciously in half, and her whole body drenched in her own blood. Once the surprise subsides, I muster the courage to properly lie her down, closing her eyes and covering her face with my handkerchief. Yeah, Shade! Yan, 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 Kathy, are you having a stroke? Are you okay? I guess she's now an exterior designer, or at least her blood is. <laughs> Oh, her interiors became exteriors. Oh no. How sad. Once the surprise subsides, I muster the courage to properly lie her down, closing her eyes and covering her face with my handkerchief. How innovative. <laughs> <coughs> A horror game where you're an interior designer, but you work with like bones and stuff. When innards become outards. Isn't that just House Flipper? I heard that House Flipper actually does have really dark lore. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, Mozzie. It's perhaps the kindest gesture I can offer her right now. Press for time as I am. But to see another suffer this kind of death. In the end, the only thing I am able to do is avert my gaze and continue with my plans. Surreal. It's all nothing but a surreal nightmare. But after everything, should this even surprise me? Ghosts, curses, hidden passages. I can't even bring myself to vocally question anything anymore, in spite of a number of them already swimming inside my head. As a kid, I used to crave for this kind of adventure. The stuff of mystery and detective novels, daring chases, interesting cases to solve, suspects to put behind bars, justice to serve. 
I was blinded, I admit. Now, I simply want this to be over. You really believe it'll be that easy, don't you? I pause, mid-step, confused. Wearily, I look around, searching wildly for the source. A long minute passes. No one speaks again. Breathing out a sigh of relief, I simply continue, this time, treading lightly, careful not to make a sound. Up ahead, I can already glimpse a set of stairs that must lead to the kitchen. Getting unnoticed in the wine cellar is not a problem, but if someone's upstairs when I pop up, well, to say it'll be complicated might be a little of an understatement. Especially if that butler is in there. Zack wasn't even able to put up a fight. If I get caught, no one else will be able to fix this. Zack is a good boy. He never say that. Okay, he might to put you in his place, to put you in your place, but he means it kindly. This time, I'm sure. There's really a voice. Well, voices. Despite standing only a few paces away from the exit, I find myself stopping and looking for it. Searching the, immediately, the immediate surrounding for the familiar form of a woman. I don't even have to venture too far from where I'm standing. Just an arm's length away from me. A mirror stands, and from it, they speak, all singing the same mocking tune against my ears, letting it echo throughout the small undercroft, murmurs and laughters, jeering, scoffing, deriding, lacing venom into every crevice in my head, taunting me. You're wrong. My mistakes lies in the first instance I've answered. The very second denial has slipped from my mouth, their words have also seeped into my heart, allowing it to prod at and rouse my temper. Despite knowing they're merely doing this to goad me, each word, each syllable trickle into me, spurring the guilt I hope I've long buried. What about Zack? <laughs> Wrongfully accused. You could be the girl now. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay. What about Becca? Oh, the way she fell to her death. But all you did was watch. What about Isabella? She warned you, didn't she? And you think you deserve to even an ounce of her life? Oof, that's a double whammy from Isabella. <coughs> Watch her die and get rejected when she's in the afterlife? Damn. Did you think this will bring her back? You can't even save her. You can't even do anything for her. They're all dead because of you. I mean, at least she's with her papa. You're the one who took that letter off Isabella's hand that day. You're the one who opened it. How does it feel, I wonder? To know you're responsible for all of this. For their deaths. What do you think I'm doing? Why do you think I'm still trying to fix this? Oh, but you can't. It's already too late. And you know that. You know all of this is futile. <laughs> Just face it, Ashton Frey. You're a failure. And they are the ones who have to pay for it. A badge and a gun. And you still can't protect your own friends. Can't even solve a case for an old man. Can't even bring him with right to justice. Can't even keep his own family together. No wonder they left you before you do the same thing to them. Mom and Dad are better off without little old you, aren't they? 
It's a good thing they had the six. Pitiful, isn't it? Some detective you are. Some friend you are. Some son you are. You might as well just throw that rank away. You're no use to people either way. Shut it! I hate this. I hate how this monster can easily get through to me. Every weakness. Every insecurity it knows. To hear it said in my friends' voices even more so. But what I hate above all of it is... You know it's true, though. All of it. It's why all you can do is tell us to shut up. You don't want to hear a single word, because you're already aware of it. You can't even admit it to yourself. Who's the coward now? But no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to say anything. Shut it! Not a single word anymore! In the end, your own incompetence led to the deaths of everyone you cared about. I would like to rebuttal this. It was my fault because I was curious what would happen if y'all died. <laughs> I'm sorry! It laughs, sharp and piercing. As it sounds, something inside me snaps. A rage, hastily, unflurring, red filling my vision. And the next thing I know, I am raising my hand, and my fist connects it to its surface. It shatters, renting the air with an ear-splitting crack, sending fragments of it on the floor. The fog from my mind lifts. Every sound, every noise returns to me, flooding my every senses. All at once, there is this deafening silence. Slowly, I become aware of my surroundings. Bottles of wine, barrels of liquor, the faint old scent of death and decay somewhere, and the small cuts at the back of my fingers. Blood drips from each digit, trailing down my wrist until it disappears behind my sleeve, or falls to the floor. Not too deep. Legible, even. There is pain, however. A different kind. An ache somewhere else that stems not from the wound, but where every single word has hit. On the ground, shards lie lifeless now. No more voices, no more insults, but even as I walk away, one whispered taunt continues to ring in my ears. It's useless, Ashton Frey. You are going to die. And you are going to die alone. <laughs> Damn, I still love Zack's voice acting. A fear. One that has been long kept in the darkest place in my heart. One that a small part of me wishes for. The trap door swings open without much fuss. It isn't even locked. Probably left open for when Wright asks for some midnight snack. I make sure the coast is clear, of course, before I pull myself up. The butler of theirs is nowhere to be seen. He's probably sleeping, attending to his master or doing some extra late night work before turning in for the night. Meanwhile, Wright won't touch anything to do with menial chores, not even with a ten foot pole. It's next to impossible for him to linger here. No servants, no anyone. And just as easy as that, I'm in. Gently, I close the hatch. If things go well, the same path will be my way out. If my luck doesn't hold, that's not an option now, is it? I really don't want to think what might happen. Sometimes it's best if I simply revel in the little victories. They're great blessings when everything else is going against you. And in a place like this, fraught with unknown dangers, it's a feeling that lasts only but a second. Suddenly, a sob. Ringing out from some distant part of the house, echoing through its empty halls. Please excuse me, I've got to blow my nose. I'm 
feeling stuffy. A lip gloss attacked me! Where did it go? <laughs> Kathy, are you lots going to me needing to sneeze and blow my nose? <laughs> Let's go, crying woman, crying ghost that wants to kill us. Ringing out from some distant part of the house, echoing through its empty halls. My shoulders immediately tense, hairs rising at the back of neck, held at the back of neck, of neck. It's held at the back of neck, guys. <clears throat> hairs raising at the back of my neck as a sudden chill passes. This, despite myself and the beliefs I've long held. Because as much as I want to convince myself that nothing's wrong, my experience tells a wholly different story. Oh, what are the chances I'll be able to leave this place alive? Um, depends on what I choose. I want to be optimistic about it, really. I'm going against something almost everyone can't quite understand. I'm just being realistic with my chances. Beyond the walls of this room, the cries continue to grow louder. With a ragged draw of breath, heavy with apprehension, I slip out of the door. Like a siren call, her voice beckons. Finding out who that is seems a good place to start as any. I keep to the shadows for the most part. Not that there's any need to. The entire place just feels empty. Odd when a house this big should have lo a large staff. You'd think there'll be one or two roaming about for some late night chores. Or someone seeking out who's ever creating this ruckus. There's none, however. Shouldn't they have security posted inside as well? Unless the security means the butler. Though I doubt the scumbag's that sloppy. He loves his life more than anything. Probably more than his own life. <gasps> Kathy! Sick brain has idea! <laughs> Wait, here, I'll send you a message. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm intelligent. I I am a smart streamer. I make I make schedules. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. I can't Oh? <coughs> oh? What do eyes mean? <coughs> Probably more than his own wife. And the things he's done? He's bound to make more than an enemy or two. He's also the kind who will do anything to keep himself safe. Alive. I wonder what he'll say when he finds out that there's something not human living with him in his own house. You got a scare by the desk off icon? Oh no! Kathy! Pat Pat. Wait, of homophobia? Or Discord's giving you a message? I don't know what it was. Oh no! No, the hoof. Oh no! Oh wait, that's scary. Now I'm scared of playing hoofophobia. <laughs> Potential dangers aside, being on my own grants me a greater degree of mobility, which I'm more comfortable with. 
I do have it downloaded. <laughs> With no tag along, I only have to worry about myself. Watch my back. Yes. <laughs> what an intriguing case. Selfish, I know. <laughs> Ashton, I'm so sorry I'm gonna abandon you for a hoof game. <laughs> for a deer horror game. <laughs> <coughs> You're in the belly of the beast, and I'm like, yo, do you know what I crave right now? A horror co op? Unnecessary. <laughs> he understands! Cappy, he says us playing Copophobia is necessary! Let's go! In the same manner, this whole plan is, no matter how idiotic going into this is. Besides, I don't really need a guide when the house's layout is fairly simple. Almost mirrored with a few modifications in the rooms. Although I've only been here once, I think I've already gave a, have a good grasp of this place. Is ins and outs. As long as you can tell which is east and west, it shouldn't be hard to find my way around. After the dining room, the main foyer should be the next thing that greets me. Where the woman's cries are leading me. Honestly, after what happened outside, I'm not even sure if I should be trusting what I'm hearing. But with the whole house somehow seemingly devoided of any of its inhabitants, I'm inclined to look into this. <laughs> Draven! You came at the worst time! Bro, me and Kathy might switch to hopophobia soon! <laughs> Thank you so much for the resub, though. I'm so sorry to hear your phone was dead, though. Oh, wait! Where's that gift from, Kavi? I recognize it! I recognize that deer! The hooves were just gloves! You're gonna switch to homophobia? I came at the perfect time! <clears throat> You missed Marianne's body. <laughs> we found we found all the corpses. <laughs> but with the whole house somehow seemingly devoid of any of its inhabitants, I'm inclined to look into this. More than surviving this kiss, a huge part of this is my training speaking. Who do you think told Cappy about it? I know it was you. <gasps> Let's go! <laughs> Yeah, I know, Kathy told you about it, and then she told me. Okay, Ashton, because you straight up said, you- I just hope this isn't a crime scene I'm walking into. <laughs> Hopefully, homophobia is not a crime scene <laughs> we're gonna walk into. Okay, but yes, guys, that's it for me. This has been Frown the Phone, and in a few minutes, we're gonna be returning with a guest, a friend, my wife. And yeah. <laughs> <coughs> impulsive, <laughs> impulsive thoughts. Let's go. Okay, but yeah, this is that so for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening, all afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll be seeing you guys soon. <laughs> Restarting my stream speaks. <laughs> streak speedrun. <laughs> Let's go. Boop.